Yes, brothers and sisters, we are finally back again for the second reaction video I did today, guys. And of course, the very first one will be where on BRBP TV YouTube channel. That link will be in the first comment in the comment box below, guys. So definitely check that out right there. Let us get into the vibrations for today, guys. The second one, guys. Welcome to each and every one of you guys on this here Mr. Licks reaction, guys. Let's go. Of course, this is the history of Dominica. I think an individual actually sent this for me, which is rather interesting. And of course, I heard a number of persons talking about Mr. Licks, you need to show what was happening back then. I don't know if I can you know side with what is taking place brothers and sisters on these vibes but this is the very first time i'm gonna be i'm gonna be watching it so i'm gonna share some of that history of dominica with you guys three, right the famed explorer christopher columbus embarked on his second voyage to the wicked christopher columbus he need to stop his dirty ways man by be splitting in hell split hell wide open man the world just two months later columbus stumbled across a small island in the caribbean sea he named it after the latin word for sunday Dominica. That's why we need to change our name, you know, brothers and sisters. We will never really truly free ourselves unless we truly free ourselves from our colonial masters, brothers and sisters. The name is Dominica. Let's call it Whitey Kubuli. Whitey Kubuli, man. You name it after Sunday. That's a Whitey Kubuli. Whitey Nature I Love. Whitey Kubuli. <laughs> Very weird. The island of Dominica. The indigenous people of Dominica called Kalinago Massive. Kalinagos are Am Amerindians. Guys, what's the difference between the Amerindians and the Kalinago people? Aren't they part of the Amerindians? The natives? Are the natives Kalinago people? We heard of the American natives. Are they Kalinago people? Are they, are they Caribs and Arawaks? What exactly are they? You never ask yourself that question. I don't know. Anyways, let's continue. The Kalinagos had ancestral roots that stretched back to at least three different waves of movement across thousands of years. The first known tribe, the Orcheroids, sailed off the east coast of South America around 4,000 years ago and lived in Dominica for 2,500 years before another South African tribe, the Arawaks, arrived under similar circumstances. Aren't they the same? Or these are like the native people are a diverse group of individuals. We have the Caribs, obviously, not the same as the Arawaks, but they were, these were the native people. So. Who exactly were the natives of the United States? Who were the native people of Earth? You ever ask yourself a question? Because a number of persons are saying that black people were the, the fung. I personally don't believe that black people were. They look brown. No doubt about it. So if you want to consider them black people because they look brown. They definitely did not look white at all. But I think they look somewhere between orange. Because if you look at the original color of black people, guys. It's actually orange. You know? Because from, I think there was an illustration. Um, on that, where they actually look at the color, if you darken orange, you get these kind of colors that we have there. Because I almost look at the same color as this thing right here, which of course is another story, right there, brothers and sisters. But if you darken the orange color, you're gonna get our color. So they say brown isn't really an actual color or black, and as a result of the the brown people, the middle brown people, when they went north. They became lighter when they went south or more to the equator they went they, they became more darker so they have to be a middle ground brothers and sisters of the original man and the original man was not a black man he was brown skin true or orange whichever you want to call it but he was definitely not black no white this is why you have extra dark people this is why you have extra white people and you have the people in between so there must be a color in between and that color most likely is what orange brothers and sisters <laughs> the clay clay is not black you know brothers and sisters if you listen to the great book when the great book says that he took adam from clay make him from clay yeah clay is not black clay is actually orange or reddish you get my drift anyways the arawaks and orteroids became a single people what are your thoughts guys do you think i'm correct if i'm wrong what are your, what are your thoughts <laughs> during the early 1400s, less than 100 years before Columbus's arrival, yet another tribe invaded the Caribbean hmm. and violently Plenty assimilated themselves in. into the descendants of the Arawaks and Orteroids. Together, they became known as the Kalinagos. As Europe entered the colonial age and expanded further into the Americas, the Kalinagos enacted a zero-tolerance policy towards all settlers attempting to land. Yeah, they just come. They see us freed up ourselves, you know. They see us freed up ourselves. They just come and say, oh, they want our land. And they just come to settle. Huh? So I must vex. I must vex with you. A few who successfully made it to Dominica quickly learned to avoid the island's center. A treacherous fusion of dense jungles, volcanoes, mountains, and wildlife. A terrain that the Kalinagos mastered over millennia. 
the Europeans were simply no match. The Kalinagos' hostile reputation amongst Spanish, French, and English circles alike was to their benefit, preventing them from becoming Spanish slaves, a fate not shared by many other tribes across the Americas. Hmm. Dominica's forests also proved to be an asset to African slaves brought by Europeans. Early in the 1500s, African slaves started fleeing European camps on the Dominican coast. And by the way, guys, I must mention that black people did not arrive in the West because of white people. Black people were already there. Okay? <laughs> Just to make it, the Africans used to travel from Africa to the Caribbean, no, to the um, South America. They used to travel on that line and they went up. So black people were already there. Okay, I just had to put this. Okay. Retreated inland into the much feared forests. The Kalinagos tolerated the Africans' presence and assisted their <laughs> so they tolerated the African presence. communities' development in the jungles, forming a mutually beneficial relationship over time. During the 1600s, Kalinagos also started granting some Europeans access to the coasts. English woodcutters settled in the west while. So that's how Dominica looked before. Well, they just gives us an ancient map or ancient look. No, I mean, this posse, posse, no, still there. Yep, guys, this is how Scott said, yes, yes, guys. Scott said, for those of you who don't know, Scott said was not bridged, they actually built, they put sand and stuff there to connect it, but it actually was not connected before. Just so you know. <laughs> I had to point this out right there. Ask Lennox if I lie. Lennox Honey Church. Well, sometimes you can't even really what I've Lennox because Lennox Honey Church. But yes, guys, this was definitely Scott said that we knew joined to the bottom of Sufria, brothers and sisters, is not was not connected. This thing that you cross to climb up on that mountain there was man made. French woodcutters settled in the east. With more Europeans came more slaves, and over time, more Africans ran into the forests, seeking freedom amongst the hidden communities. Deep inside the volcanic forests, fortified communities of runaway slaves lived. No Guys, you never ask yourself oh, that, 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 that sentiment right there. They met nitties on the island. True. Did they wipe out all the nitties on the island? No. Sorry about that, guys. Um, anyways, um, did they enslave the natives? No. Therefore, when the blacks escaped and went to the forest, they most likely must have mingled with the natives. Hmm. But what ha what exactly happened after that? I don't know. Anyways, let me leave that alone. I wasn't there. Known to Europeans as the Maroons. Slaves from across the Caribbean started to hear whispers of runaway slaves living in the forests of an obscure tiny island. So all he didn't know to escape before, huh? Huh? All you didn't know to escape before, you have to wait to hear about other slaves escaping before you get the courage to escape. Miss Ami, if I trap and you keeping me as a slave, I could care less what all the rest people think. I could care less. I want to escape. Father, what you mean? So I have to wait for somebody else. It's similar to what is actually happening in this day and age. People waiting for somebody else for them to for somebody else to do something before they, they, they decide to do something. Guys. I don't know if it's because of my father instilled that in us. He said, if you see something that needs to be done, do it. They wait for somebody else to do it. Do it. Maybe that, that's why. Because I can't understand how you've been enslaved. And then you're waiting for somebody else. You hear, oh, that person escaped. Maybe I can do it too. Fire burn that boss. I escaping. The ample ways to always escape, you know. But some of us are afraid because of mental slavery. But the Maroons' numbers were small enough and Dominica's jungles dangerous enough to deter any serious search efforts by the Europeans. Yep. In 1660, England and France, both being in a rapid period of expansion across the Americas, agreed to keep Dominica neutral. It's not, it's not all you own. It's not all you own. <laughs> Boy. An island of the Kalinagos, as they called it. The French and English were both using Dominica to supply wood to their nearby colonies that had been deforested after a century and a half of settlement. The neutrality agreement lasted a full 100 years, remarkable considering the on and off hostilities between England and France during that period. In the late 16th... That's why we are British in the Creole, we are British, we have um, French, French, and we also have Spanish brothers and sisters. So keep that in mind. In hundreds, Janet Roll, a free black man from the French colony of Martinique, visited Dominica. He saw its lack of development as a significant business opportunity. After Roll got permission from the Kalinagos, he moved his family to Dominica 
and founded its first ever plantation, which he staffed with African slaves. So a slave man was, so a black man, a free black in Martinique, came and enslaved people in Dominica. So it's not white people alone that was enslaving people here. Eh? Just keep that in mind. Just remember what is happening today. How could our black brother, brothers do this to us? You know, it happened, yes. In 1761, as part of the Seven Years' War, the British invaded Rousseau, a French Rousseau. settlement on Dominica's coast. The attack was a blatant violation of the Dominican Neutrality Agreement, and in 1763, the Treaty of Paris acknowledged the end of neutrality for good. Dominica was now a British colony. The British built an extensive plantation society, fueled almost entirely by slave labor, with sugar and coffee as their primary exports. Marcus Shree. French, who lived there already, were allowed to stay, provided they pay a tax to the crown, but they were treated with suspicion by the British. Hmm. Still, the French had it better than free blacks, who weren't allowed to own land or participate in politics. African slaves, who made up the island's overwhelming majority, had virtually no rights at all, and were forced to live and work on plantations with horrible conditions. Over time, many more slaves escaped into the forests, becoming a real Ooh, problem people. for the planter class. The colonial government tried to contain the issue by offering rewards for the return of runaway slaves, harshly punishing them if recaptured. I think that's the guy that they have in, um, in Ruzu. They have him, a statue of him in Ruzu. As well as punishing any free people, black or white, who assisted them. Hmm. Persistent wars between France and Britain added more layers of distrust throughout the colony's society. On the night of August 6, 1778, some French settlers threw a party and invited the local British garrison to drink with them. The following morning, to the hungover British troops' surprise, a French army had landed on Dominica's shores. British Governor William Stewart had no choice but to surrender to the French. Life in Dominica didn't change much under French rule, but there was a decrease in the arrival of new slaves and investments were made into infrastructure. But hurricanes in 1779 and 1780 destroyed the progress on French development projects. The confluence of events caused an exodus of wealthy British settlers, leaving only poor British settlers who could not afford to leave. But that, that, is, that is a kind of a, a thing, brothers and sisters. You're talking about 1779. 2000 years, 2000, what is it, you know, 200 years later, <laughs> Hurricane David struck and Dominica was free. But 200 years prior to that, brothers and sisters, it was under slavery, we. Hmm. That is something else, we. That is truly something else, eh? But white people have to be wicked like that now. You're enslaving other black people. White people slaving black people, enslaving black people, black people enslaving black people. Boy. It happened in Dominica. Learn your history. Maroon raids against the remaining British plantations increased. The French silently allowed Maroons to raid British plantations, a strategy they hoped would diminish the threat of the British settler class to French rule of the island. On April 12th, 1782, Britain defeated France at the Battle of the Saints, the largest naval battle in the history. Of That's between Guadeloupe and Dominica. The Saints. The Caribbean. Dominica was returned to Britain. And in 1784, the British returned to Dominica to create a new colonial government yet again. Hmm. Captain John Ord, an experienced commander of the Royal Navy, was appointed governor of Dominica. He immediately focused on the Maroons, forming a militia in 1785 called the Legion to take them out. But because Ord's Legion was trained in formal military tactics, they were ill-prepared for a guerrilla war against the Maroons inside of Dominica's... Yes. Beat them up! Beat them! Us jungles. The Legion lost many early encounters. They managed to turn the tide, however, by capturing some Maroons, apparently scared women and children, and interrogating them for information which revealed the locations of many Maroon camps and the head chief, Bala. Many escaped slaves were recaptured. The Maroons, though not destroyed, they snitch on us here. They snitch here. had been quelled. The British seized on the Maroon War as a pretense to strip African cultural influence from the colony. 1788 reforms improved conditions for slaves on plantations. Additional rights were also granted to free blacks, including land ownership and economic rights. By the late as you know that type of slavery that was happening there. 1700s, Dominica had become an appealing destination for free blacks across the entire Caribbean. And the reason why they did this so that the blacks would not retaliate. You were free, but you didn't have the same rights as them. Remember, he said they gave them more rights. You know, so you wouldn't want to fight. You know offering them more rights than any other colony in the region. 
mulattoes, a class of free black merchants who considered themselves to be more French than they did African, moved to Dominica in large numbers, but their additional rights had a backhanded intent, meant to strip African slaves and free blacks of any incentive to... So the, 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 the light-skinned people, they decide they were fighting against the French. They say they're French, man. <laughs> they're black, you know what? They're French, apparently. Why we like to do ourselves as things, man? Just because we're a little lighter skinned, really? Hmm. Embrace their African heritage, thereby becoming less likely to rebel against the status quo of life under you Europe. Never... Consider themselves to be more French than they did African. Move to Dominica in large numbers, but their additional rights had a backhanded intent, meant to strip African slaves and free blacks of any incentive to embrace their African hmm. heritage, thereby becoming less likely to rebel against the status quo of hmm. life under European rule. One notable mulatto. So that tells you a lot. They're stripping you of who you actually are to try to inculcate or brainwash you with some other thought process that is not who you are and then you have people acting in other ways that is not who they actually were interesting so that they will not rebel against them if i strip you of who you are you will not know who you are that is that is that is wickedness we boy anyways was a man named Jean-Louis Polinaire, whose father came from a line of French settlers and whose mother was a slave from Africa. Polinaire took great inspiration from the French Revolution and the Enlightenment ideas. So my brother, you black and you think you're not black, you French. Huh? You French. You foisy. <laughs> so it had the light-skinned ones and it had the black ones. From Africa. Polinaire took great inspiration from the French Revolution and the Enlightenment ideas. In Dominica, on New Year's Day, 1791, Polinaire orchestrated a slave revolt. Slaves demanded better okay. conditions. Big up Polinaire, big up Polinaire. Sorry for coming for you. Sorry. Right. And more free time. When Governor Ord refused their demands, they turned violent. Ord responded to the slave riots by deploying both British regiments and black rangers. A bounty for Polinaire's capture was, to the surprise of some in the colony, cashed in by Kalinago. Kalinago, that sell them out. Boy, boy. Kalinago. Everybody sell, not everybody, man. Everybody just selling, not everybody. Except the white man. The white man alone are not selling, on the, selling out themselves. Hmm. That's just something else, eh? Slaves were punished with a series of executions, culminating in the hanging of Polinaire himself in March of 1791. The crowd of hundreds watched Polinaire's final moments. The swift public executions sent a clear message to the slaves of Dominica. News of the New Year's revolt reached London in late March, weeks before a planned debate in the House of Commons on the ethics of the global slave trade. Abolition had been gaining popularity amongst the general public, but was still a divisive issue. News of the slavery. Keep in mind, brothers and sisters, some of all you like to associate um, slavery with Christianity and this kind of things. Eh? Catholicism was running here. Eh? Uh, so there's a huge difference between Catholicism and Christianity. In fact, if you look at history in itself, it was Christians that helped free blacks. And Catholics helped try to keep black people in slaves. So I don't understand how people part of the Catholic Church. They don't understand the history. Even they used to beat people to try to read the Bible because they didn't want people to actually read the Bible. I, I don't understand. Anyways, I'm going too far. Revolts on Dominica played into the hands of those against abolition. Governor Ord was called to London for questioning on his handling of the New Year's revolt. Ord was cleared of any abuse of authority, but decided not to return to Dominica. He retired from governorship entirely, and instead returned to the Navy, where he served as an admiral. Then in 1807, John Ord was elected to the House of Commons, where he served as a member of Parliament to round out his career. 1793 saw yet another war break out between Britain and France, exasperating resentment between Dominica's various groups. In 1805, an army of... Dominica was the in spot, you know why? Guys, I'll leave this link in the description below so you guys can check it out. You know why Dominica was the in thing? Because Dominica was smack dad in the center of it all. Where Dominica's location is, was smack dad in the center. So if they needed resources in the top, they could send from Dominica to go on top. They needed sources in the south, they could send from Dominica to go down. Dominica was smack dad in the middle. But you know, just like how back in the days, people used to come to Dominica for them to do operations. And now, this is no longer it because, you know, our own people, you know, just like back then, our own people are the ones who selling us out for the, I was used to say mighty dollar, but the dollar not mighty, but for the dollar. Anyways, brothers and sisters, what are your thoughts, man? Leave your thoughts 
in the comment box below guys this link will be in the description below so you guys can also check it out as well and with all that said right there guys i'll see you guys in the next one don't forget to check out the previous um, um, reaction i did today on brbptv that link will be, be where in the first comment in the comment box below anyways guys thanks for being a part of the vibrations for today and i'll see you guys in the next reaction video Boom, bam.